Welcome to episode two of Let the Adventure Begin. August is National Breastfeeding Month, so today our focus is on breastfeeding. We're joined by Mona Lisa Hamlin. She's a nurse manager at Christiana Care Center for Women's and Children's Health, also works with our perinatal resources and community programs. If you have already had a baby here at Christiana Care, you may recognize Mona. Mona, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me, Megan. So whether you definitely plan to breastfeed or you're still unsure, we are here to answer all of your questions. So whatever questions you may have, please put those in the chat of this live video and we will monitor those questions and get to as many as we can throughout this conversation. So Mona, let's start by just going over the basic benefits of breastfeeding. Yeah, uh, well, thank you and happy National Breastfeeding Month. This is an exciting time for us in the lactation field. We consider breast milk and human milk to be the first food, and it has several benefits, which is why we are always so excited to talk about it. Breastfeeding is helpful for the breastfeeding parent as well as the baby and society as a whole. So for those who are breastfeeding, breastfeeding helps with bonding with baby. It helps prevent ovarian, breast, and cervical cancer. It helps with um, elevating mood, especially after giving birth, which is good. And for baby, it helps with a slew of things. Immune properties are number one right now, especially as we're going into flu season and dealing with the virus uh, that is causing a pandemic for us globally, as well as IQ. We, we have seen the evidence that shows that breastfeeding in human milk actually increases a baby's IQ, helps to decrease risks of asthma, any other respiratory illness, GI illnesses, especially for our premature babies who are at highest risk for having uh, necrotizing enterocolitis, which is the number one illness for premature babies. And so knowing that breast milk has positive antibodies um, that significantly help the immune system and fight off viruses and other bad bacteria is really beneficial as well. It has long lasting effects, not just during childhood, but we see the benefits go all the way through uh, adulthood. That sounds great. That's certainly a good argument for breastfeeding. So Christiana Care obviously has a lot of classes for soon to be moms, some of which would help with the breastfeeding and all of the questions that comes with that. So talk a little bit about our offerings here at Christiana Care. Sure, so we know that there's a lot of what to expect around breastfeeding and feeding your baby in general. And that's one of the reasons why Christiana Care has really opted to support, promote and protect breastfeeding. And one of the reasons why we are a baby friendly hospital. And what that means is we have taken on the task of following the 10 steps for successful breastfeeding and have achieved the designation through Baby Friendly USA. And some of those ways that we do that is by normalizing breastfeeding. And so what you'll see in all of our classes is that we um, really center breastfeeding as a normal feeding proponent for moms and babies. And some of those classes that would be really informative are understanding labor and birth, understanding breastfeeding, understanding the newborn, and understanding postpartum care. And all of those are online right now during our COVID pandemic. Uh, we are looking forward to one day returning to in-person classes as well. And what kind of support is offered to moms in the hospital? Yeah, that's a great question. So actually a part of our baby friendly designation is that we ensure that every staff member, whether it be a nurse, a physician, even a medical assistant, um, has been trained to support breastfeeding at the very basic level. And so that means everybody that comes in contact with mom, whether she's pregnant or even after baby is born, can support, um, whether it's supporting with latch, making sure that we know that baby should eat eight or more times a day. Uh, if they need to pump, we can set them up with a pump. And then we also have an advanced level of skills from our breastfeeding peer counselors, and as well as our lactation consultants. And so we have board certified lactation consultants on staff that can see those who are at most risk for not reaching their breastfeeding goals, or may have run across a complexity in feeding their baby while they're here at the hospital. And what about after you take the baby home? Obviously, you can get all this amazing support when you're in the hospital, but sometimes things may get a little hectic once you go home. So how can new moms find that support from the comfort of their own home? Yeah, absolutely. So what we know is that actually the first two weeks after having baby is where 
we are more likely to need all the resources we can get. And Christiana Care has really taken that into mind as we've developed our programs. So we have a warm line that is open seven days a week from eight to eight during the week and eight to four during the weekend. Essentially parents can call, leave a message and we will call them back that day or if not first thing in the morning to help troubleshoot over the phone. We also have a lactation clinic. We offer telehealth where they can call in either on their phone or computer and talk to one of our lactation consultants, or they can come in person and they can bring you know, their baby so that we can see a full feeding and help to create a feeding plan if they're having trouble or just reassure mom that things are going well. We also have a breastfeeding text message platform, which is new to us. It's actually a year old, and we're really excited about it. Our families are raving about the support that they receive. It lasts for the first year after birth. And the first couple of months, we routinely push out information according to baby's milestones. So if it's a week, after baby's birth and we're sending out information about have questions about sleep, that's normal. Here's some resources and information. And if you're having trouble, text us back and we can either text you or if you'd rather, we can give you a call. We've had parents utilize the system and text at 2 a.m. knowing that they'd get a call back first thing in the morning to help to uh, get some relief as to whether they're doing things well or reassurance or again to see a lactation consultant. It's really nice because there's a live person on the other end that's receiving those text messages or phone calls to get back to them. And the perk of being able to text is while you're thinking about it in the middle of the night, you send that text and not have to hope you remember to, to reach out in the morning. Someone will call you after you send that middle of the night SOS. Yeah, because it usually does happen in the middle of the night. <laughs> so it's not unusual for us to come in and find a list of moms who are saying, hey, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm either having pain, not sure if my baby's getting enough, and we can respond in a timely manner and get them some help as soon as possible. That's great. So this week specifically is Black Breastfeeding Week, which aims to end the, the gaping racial disparity in breastfeeding rates. Talk about that gap and why it's so important. Yeah, so Black Breastfeeding Week was founded to really highlight the disparities. And what we see across the board and across the nation is that our Black families are anywhere from 10 to 20% less likely to breastfeed than our counterparts. And that's either by initiation or even looking at ex exclusive breastfeeding and duration. What we know is that our leading healthcare organizations, the Academy of Pediatrics, um, United States Breastfeeding Committee, et cetera, all recommend that we exclusively breastfeed our infants for the first six months of life. And so as we see a decrease or a change between our initiation rates, that gap is there. But then even as we go on to three months and six months, that significantly drops even about 50%. And so if we're already starting at lower numbers and we're thinking about our population around the NICU, for example, the Black community is more likely to have, unfortunately, babies who are born prematurely um, and need really as much human milk as possible. And so this week is really to alert the healthcare field and the public health field around the resources that are needed to ensure that we're giving support and optimal um, care to our Black families to help to close that gap and decrease that percentage rate. So how is Christiana Care specifically doing that? So we're actually partnering with the Delaware Healthy Mother and Infant Consortium this week. We're hosting a movie tomorrow night that showcases um, breastfeeding and chocolate milk. And we're excited to have a panel to talk to the community about that. And we have a couple of listening sessions also um, throughout the weekend and the first two days of next week as we close out Black Breastfeeding Week. And this is where we can talk to other care providers about the benefits of understanding how to support families with breastfeeding, as well as the community to debunk some myths and show them where to get support and resources so that they can be successful towards their goals in breastfeeding. That sounds great. So breastfeeding, you know, sometimes doesn't work out for some, for medical reasons, for personal reasons. So if there's someone watching who's struggling with breastfeeding or thinks they may want to go in a different direction, go directly to formula, what should they do to get information on that? Yeah, that's a great question. And one thing I'll say is we're a baby-friendly hospital. And one of the things that 
means is that we ensure that families can make a knowledge-based decision. And so we give them all of the information about breastfeeding and formula feeding, and no matter their choice, we're gonna support them whether they choose to breastfeed, only pump, formula feed, et cetera. And so because that's such an individual decision, I would encourage them to talk to their provider either during pregnancy or once they come into the hospital. And again, any clinician, whether it be the nurse or provider can support uh, ways to optimally feed their baby formula, make sure that it's safe, that they're mixing it properly, they understand storage and hygiene of, of bottles and other devices. And at what point in pregnancy do you really need to be making that decision? That's a great question. So we actually asked that during the prenatal visit on, on visit one, on what they think they're going to choose for feeding their baby. This is where we talk to them often about the benefits of human milk and breastfeeding. And again, kind of give them some information if they're deciding or have a medical reason why they would need formula. They can make it up, you know, make their decision throughout their pregnancy, but we do commit to providing information and education throughout their pregnancy for sure. So you've mentioned a few times that we're a baby friendly hospital, which is, you know, very important. So let's dive a little bit more into what that actually means. Sure. So being a baby friendly hospital means that we follow the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding. Essentially, that means as an organization, we have policies that support promote and protect breastfeeding. We ensure that every caregiver that comes in contact with mom and baby are able to successfully give basic information, education and support, make sure that baby's latching well, that baby's peeing and pooping, that the parents understand that baby needs to feed eight or more times a day, that we're not giving things that would uh, essentially be seen as the out to breastfeeding or potentially sabotage their goal to meet breastfeeding needs. And that we again have all of those resources. When a parent comes into our organization, they'll see posters on the wall, they'll hear conversations from their caregiver around how we um, support breastfeeding. And if they have any questions, we'll make sure that they have all the resources that they need to have the answers there. Additionally, we ensure that it's not just during the stay, as we talked about earlier, but also long after they leave here, right? Breastfeeding should really not end until that mom and baby are ready to do so. So it re it's regardless of whether it's six months, a year, even two years, that's really up to that dyad. And so we wanna make sure that they understand that we have the resources that uh, they need to make sure that they can reach their goals, whatever they are. And I know that Christiana Care is also involved in the Mother's Milk Bank, and you work with that uh, personally. So explain what that is and how that may help new moms as well. Yeah, that's a great question. We actually get this call all the time for moms who are looking to donate their breast milk. Currently, with Christiana Care's Milk Bank, we are internal only. So we don't accept uh, outside milk, but we do house all of the pumped milk here for moms who have babies in the NICU or somewhere else in the hospital. Um, we also manage any of the donor milk that comes in from a donor facility. So we work with the Human Milk Banking Association of North America and other companies that we purchase the donor milk from to make sure that it's screened, et cetera. And then we handle any type of mixing of the milk, whether it be mom's own milk, donor milk, or formula, to make sure that we're optimizing and have high quality um, for the nutrition that we're giving to our babies. We do provide resources for those who are looking to donate to a local milk bank to ensure that they have all the you know, answers that they need and understand the screening process, et cetera. So you mentioned the NICU babies. How do you support those moms who want to breastfeed, but their baby is in the NICU and are trying to figure all of that out? So again, we have our nurses who are armed with giving them basic information. One of the things that we know about a mom and baby who are separated is that we need to get the milk stimulated as soon as possible. So we try to have moms hand express or pump as soon as possible right after delivery, but no longer than six hours. So we get that started. And then we do have a list that our lactation consultants follow. And because that's such a vulnerable population, they're one of our highest priorities to see um, prior to the end of the day. 
we do work closely with both the parents as well as the nursing team in the NICU to try to coordinate feedings. And we routinely check in on moms who are only able to pump at the moment until their baby's ready to feed at the breast um, to make sure that their supply is going well, talk to them about keeping up their fluids and nutrition, trying to get rest, and really diving into also just kind of the stress of having a baby in the NICU, right? Oftentimes we talk about breastfeeding, we think it's just mom and and baby, but there's a lot of mental health needs that are there that we wanna support just to ensure that that mom and that family feels like they have what they need. And speaking of mental health needs, it can be a very frustrating time for all of the new moms who are trying to make that connection and learn how to breastfeed. How can family members, husbands, you know, grandparents support that mom who's going through that breastfeeding journey? Oh, that's such a great question. I will say that we know that we talk to our grandparents and right, our moms who come in for their, their own babies having babies. And we often talk about what we know now is a little bit different than what we knew back then. Um, so for those who may have some myths around what to expect with, with breastfeeding, so for example, if they're worried about the nutritional um, components of breast milk, we ensure that everyone's on the same page in regards to the benefits of breastfeeding and human milk for the baby and how natural it is for breastfeeding to occur um, and to understand what baby behavior means. You know, if, if baby's crying, that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't want the breast, but maybe we've waited a little long for feeding to, to start and we teach them about soothing, et cetera. And so we do make an effort to ensure that everybody who's gonna be supporting that mom and baby are also knowledgeable about their own role, how to change the diaper in the middle of the night and then give baby to mom to feed and then maybe to stay up and put the baby back so that she can get rest right after the feeding. Um, how we talk about making sure that breastfeeding is off to a good start for that first month or so before we're introducing a pacifier so that we can maximize baby's supply and ability to feed well. So there's lots of ways that either the other support person or family can help as well. And it's very hard to have any conversation right now without bringing up COVID-19. And I know that we are very actively promoting not only pregnant women get vaccinated, but women who are breastfeeding as well. Talk about the benefits of being COVID-19 vaccinated and breastfeeding. Yeah, absolutely. So this is one of the cool things about breast milk. Truly it shifts according to what mom's been around as well as what baby has been around. And so what we're finding is that when moms are vaccinated with the COVID-19 vaccine, it actually changes the antibodies in the breast milk and gives extra protective factors to go to the baby to protect that baby from the virus. And so that has been a really phenomenal benefit that we were able to talk about with our families to give a little bit of reassurance that it is not only okay, but a really beneficial thing for your baby if you're vaccinated while you're breastfeeding. And Mona, what was the most important thing about breastfeeding that you'd like to share today before we go? I would say that any breastfeeding is great. It doesn't matter whether you only had one feeding, one day of feeding, one week, one month, even if you pumped, you have breastfed your baby and please make sure that you give yourself kudos for that. That is an amazing gift. And again, no matter how you choose to feed your baby, we are here to support you and you know, be here for you during your feeding journey with your baby. Thank you so much for all of that information. And if you are watching and would like more information about our breastfeeding resources here at Christiana Care, please check out those comments below. We have a ton of really great links that not only gives you those resources, but things like that texting program, but also some educational stuff as well. Thank you so much. And please tune in two weeks from now. We'll be discussing eating for pregnancy as part of our Let the Adventure Begin series. Thanks so much and have a great afternoon.